Hello. Welcome to another, open, to another house. open house. Welcome. My name is Drew. Is Drew. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Your turn. Your turn. No, nah, fam, you got it. Okay, and okay. then, and then this, this is my, uh, my co-host, co Zandra. Zandra. Uh, we're here today we're here to ask to ask you questions. questions. That you may have you about, have about our boot camp, camp, what to expect, what to expect um, um, things of that nature. Of that nature. But, but before we get before started, we get started, <coughs> started, started, sorry, sorry. Let me share my, screen, share my real screen, screen real quick. Um, we have we have early bird, early bird going on right going now. On right now. Should I share? Should I share? The phone? Uh, I. Oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. don't hear an echo. I don't hear any echo, but... Yeah, I think, yeah, I I'm, think echoing. I'm echoing. I, I don't know what it, I is, know what it is, though. You have an unmuted tab? No, no. Well, that's okay. I can talk about the early bird discount there while you sort it out. Drew, my man. So for everybody who's who's uh, with us, if you're not turning your device to um, newcamp.co, that's newcamp.co, um, you'll see the uh, you'll want to go there now, and you'll see that the early bird discount for full stack is ending in ten days, and the early bird discount for Python is ending on Monday, I believe it is, right, Drew? Right. right. Yeah, so you'll want to hop into it if you were thinking about the back-end SQL with DevOps Python Bootcamp. The early bird pricing is ending Monday. Cool. And we have a Q&A for today. Our thumbnail wasn't super duper exciting, but thank you for joining us, those of you who are here. And Q and A um, questions and answers for anyone who's a prospective student, even some current students, if we have anybody there, uh, prospective instructors. Thanks for joining us and dropping your questions in the chat. And as always, you can join our live stream. Be, make sure you have a camera. Make sure you have a microphone, and uh, you can join in and be on the stream with us, and we can answer your questions. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so when you first, when you uh, first uh, go to the go to the back end with Python with boot camp. Boot camp. Hurry, hold on. Hurry, hold on. Let's try, something. try something. Okay. Try, uh, try, uh, try muting, your, muting mic. your mic. Okay. Am I echoing still? Can everyone hear me? Okay. All right. So. Uh, to get the early bird tuition rate uh, b before Sunday, I mean, before Monday the 7th, um, you would log into newcamp.co. Um, you would pull up to the backend SQL and Python bootcamp. And once you pull that up, um, you can either log in or go directly to register. And when you register for the bootcamp, you'll see when it starts, when it ends. Um, you also get to um, see the tuition schedule. Um, so this one, this particular bootcamp has three modules. And you'll see the, the beginning and end of each one. And you also see the, the date that you'll be graduating as well. Um, and right underneath that, you'll be able to select uh, which day you would like to have your workshop. And we do have, um, I guess, multiple days now. You could choose either Saturday, Sunday, and Friday because we actually serve the um, the boot camps not only in Pacific, Central, and Eastern. We also serve it on the Asian Pacific uh, time zone as well. So, uh, for example, I choose my time zone, which would be uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturdays. And then even if you don't log in up here, you'll be required to log in. Uh, so I'll just choose Google. And 
it automatically logged in because I logged in <laughs> prior to um, sharing my screen. And then, then you'll be able, you'll to, be able to share your information. Share your information. And, and um, um, after you, after fill, you in the fill in the required information, information you'll, you'll be required, be required to, to check these two, check boxes, these two here boxes here before checking, before out. checking out. And, and you want to catch the early bird rate, bird rate because it's only, it's six, only payments six payments of three fifty four. Which totals, which totals to $2,124. And, and, and you actually, actually save, save $440, $440 just for registering early. Um, if you register after the early, early bird deadline, which is the 8th, and like anywhere between the 8th and the 21st, um, then it would be, um, I think it says it right here, six payments of 423 and that would amount to um, $2,538. So, I mean, it makes a lot of sense um, to just, you know, save money, um, um, especially if it's going to be for the exact same thing, if you can. And, um, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, we could run through that again. And I will stop sharing my screen now, and we will get to the questions and or maybe chat with the, the viewers here today. Again, thank you for your time. Hey, I will unmute myself. Um, while you, you could try to figure that out, Drew, I didn't see your screen. I don't know if you're sharing and I just missed it. But um, um, I think everybody here should be familiar with newcamp.co. And if not, why not? You should be on there right now. <laughs> and just click on the bootcamp that you're interested in and then scroll down to the date that you're interested in and then click the register button. So um, one thing that I notice a lot of people uh, talking about lately is, um, you know, the job market, how's the job market doing? It seems to be picking back up again. Um, some people are saying, depending on what area they're living in, the job market is, you know, still not super great. Um, what are you seeing where you are when you're doing a job search in your area, like Indeed or LinkedIn or whatever tools you use? What are you seeing? Let us know in the chat. Let us know by jumping in the stream. Um, and also, where are you? Where is everyone? I am in New York. Where are our viewers at? Great question. Drew, let everyone know where you're at, too. Oh, oh, I'm in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Hey, Ludo in the house, chilling hey. in Portugal. Let me see if I can. Very cool. Washington State. Oh, tri-state area, New Jersey. Miguel Anthony, thank you so much and Dallas, Fort Worth, Columbia, South Carolina. How is the weather down there? I am melting here in New York. Nolens, oh snap. Okay, now we got a party in Idaho. <laughs> All right, nice. Now it's cooking. So we're like super national, international here. And let us know, what are you seeing like when you go on job search sites and look up, um, you know, if you type in JavaScript or Python, um, or you type in, you know, front end developer, what are you seeing in your research? Um, are you doing research uh, into the job market where you're at? Uh, do you filter it down to your current location? Or um, are you searching nationally because you're focusing on remote? Or um, we could talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. Hello there, Gaintar, Tsar. Am I saying your name correctly? Another letter Z in the house. Awesome. Good to see you. And um, Daniel Wilson. Sorry that it's humid. Yeah, it's humid here too. Okay, so Curtis, uh, maybe Drew, if you could highlight the comment from 
the seven minute mark. Awesome. Yeah, Curtis is talking about seeing um, mostly remote positions and being from a more rural perspective or setting. So that's super cool. I talk to a lot of people on the phone and they're interested in um, looking for remote roles because they're in a more rural position um, or they are dealing with family or um, you know caregiver situations or all kinds of other uh, life conditions that make remote work more attractive so increasingly you know people are definitely looking for that um, if you're in a more rural setting sometimes it helps in your job search if you look at the closest metro area to where you are so if there's any metro area at all in driving range you might want to filter your job searches to that city so you are still applying for a remote role or um, you're contacting a company in hopes of finding something remote but you're gonna rank higher on their candidate list if you're within a car ride of their office even if they you know if you have to stay at a hotel overnight if they want to yank you into the office at the last minute for something you're yankable you know at least you're you're focusing on your region so that can help you to rank a little higher on the candidate list if you focus on your region even though you're looking for remote you're still focusing on one of your strengths which is being kind of local or kind of nearby so thank you so much curtis for for sharing that did you have any thoughts on that too drew have you heard any trends like that or anything and i'll i'll uh we'll see if we can fight the echo beast here but i'll go on mute if i have to um no i, no, mean, you, I mean you, you pretty much you pretty much said said a lot of a what lot of needed what to be needed said to be said i, I completely agree with you agree with you um, mm -hmm. yeah yeah there, there's, there's nothing there's I could, nothing i could add to that add to that oh to that. well that's uh that's rare and i i am award myself points for rendering drew speechless good job me <laughs> so yeah i also see some hmm uh brennan not really uh not impressed tell us more brennan uh, we hope everyone has a good experience but everyone's different so everyone's experience is going to be different but thank you for your honesty we really live or die by that student feedback um, and then, um, oh yeah, Muhammad. Oh, thank you so much for joining. Right. I'm calling you uh Gainsar, but, um, yeah, Muhammad, thanks so much, um, for, for calling too. And, um, I see from Candace too, um, a comment at the eight minute mark. Mm -hmm. We seem to have slayed the echo beast too. So that's awesome. Good job, Drew. <laughs> Yeah, it seemed to be more roles, more people seeking seniors. Yeah, that seems to be a constant, right? And why wouldn't you? You want to get more money for your, <laughs> for your more value for your dollar. You want to staff your entire team with seniors. <laughs> um, as depending on the company that you know is, that's unrealistic. A lot of times. Um, companies are looking for quote unquote unicorn devs um, and they don't want to put in the time and energy to get a junior skilled. They just want to skip straight ahead to having a senior on their team. So um, that senior comes from another company where they spent years as a junior. So people have to be trained somewhere and the industry seems to fight that. But um, the reality is, you know, you have to learn, you have to earn your chops uh, somewhere. So um, joining a boot camp definitely is going to help you to seem more seasoned. You can um, you can work really hard on your own on projects, and um, you can go so far. Many people can can go only so far on their own with their with their projects that gets them to to that junior level and um, um, having a nice portfolio and a nice looking GitHub. Um, yeah, Candice, if you wanted to join us in and, and share anything that you've seen, we, we appreciate it too. But thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah. And a lot of times too, we have some 
coaches um, at New Camp. We have difference of, uh, we have a variety of opinions, I should say. So some even recommend if you're a strong junior, you should apply to a senior role occasionally. It will be a challenge and it gets you out of your comfort zone and you know the interview process will be challenging and you just might get it because sometimes the the person who wrote the job description, maybe they just copy pasted everything from the last time they posted a role. Maybe they really need a junior, um, but they are, um, they're like kind of dumping everything on a junior and it kind of beefs up the, the job description. Or maybe you have the chops that they need and they just need to give you a chance. So um, sometimes even if you see a senior role, it, it, it might not be, you know, the job description might not be exactly, you know, what it says on paper. So sometimes it's, it's worth a shot there too. Anything uh, you seeing there in the chat that looks good there, Drew? Anything juicy? Yeah, I'm yeah, trying not to, I'm talk, trying not to talk because, because I, I, keep I keep echoing. So I, I think so it's, I think it's, it's a problem on my end. But um, here's a uh, Gary Gibson. Uh, if I pay for the training, are you going to give the internship I need for experience so I can get this tech job? Um, well, we are partnered up with different um, companies that do offer apprenticeships. Um, and um, you can also apply for internships as well. Um, but it's it's not necessarily a guarantee if you uh, enroll into our boot camp that you're going to land one of those apprenticeships or and or internships, but you do have a better chance um, after graduating from one of our boot camps to, um, you know, be, because they do give us uh, a lot of time or notifi notification when their application process opens up. Um, so, yeah, I mean, is there anything else that you can add, Zandra? Oh, you covered it real nice. Um, definitely we get you trained. So New Camp focuses on building your skills and the, the experience that you need is only gonna come through working. Uh, getting your foot in the door will be accomplished by your portfolio of projects. So you'll really wanna work hard on your projects. And if you have some domain knowledge, I always say, if you have some expertise in some other area, maybe you know a lot about, you know, fishing or cooking or childcare or something like that, make one of your projects about that topic and then apply for a dev job in that industry or something related to that industry or something similar. So that will kind of make you seem more competent in the interview like if you're an accountant and you make an account you build a you build a mortgage amortization app or something and then you apply for a dev job at an insurance company or you know a home a real estate lending company or something like that you're going to seem that much more competent when you're discussing your application your your code um, and you know all the code because you wrote it. Uh, theoretically, you know all the code that you wrote. Um, so yeah, definitely work hard on your projects and that will help you a lot to get your foot in the door and you will learn a ton on the job. Um, so you can, you can stay in that role and view your first role as that, um, that, that learning experience that you need to level up your career. And uh, you, I should also mention that you have some coaching as well. So once you get in our main boot camps, like the full stack, the front end, the front end is basically um, full stack with back end JavaScript included, so it's a little bit longer. And then the back end SQL DevOps with Python boot camp, which is focusing on Python, not JavaScript. All three of those have coaching included in the cost of the tuition. So it's a super good value for um, you know, as far as your your career um, and the and the tuition cost, having a career coach to help you, you get four live sessions there, so um, that should give you a little bit more more confidence too. There, Gary, thank you so much for asking. Yeah, great question, Gary. Thanks for asking.
All right, who do we have next? Um, yeah, thanks, thanks, Miguel. Uh, I think we figured it out. There, there's some type of feedback loop when both of our mics are open. So um, yeah, I think we we figured out a way to to override this this uh, echo chamber, so to speak. Um, don't forget the you could hop into the chat. Uh, you know, have a video chat with us. Um, just have your mic and your camera on, and I'll let you on. And you can ask your question live. All right, then we have Brandon. We have Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Yeah, we, we don't just cherry pick or take only the, the good, you know. We, we listen to all the feedback. We try to be upfront and uh, transparent as possible. And so, yeah, we hope for sure that you put your feedback in the weekly feedback surveys that we have because we really live or die off of our off of our feedback now in your case with the videos and the the lady's voice i think um i know you're probably talking about our our uh, our former fearless leader mine there in, in curriculum and i think you you might lose out because the overwhelming uh opinion on uh um that lovely uh narration by Minet was positive so in our if you did put that in your feedback survey um i think you probably would have been overruled by most of the feedback that we got so that probably wouldn't have changed um yeah but we thank you very much for joining new Kim. and you remember you do have lifetime access brennan to our community and also to the courses. So when the courses are updated, there could be a different narrator on the video. <laughs> so you can always come back and watch it again. And um, uh, also our community uh, is constantly evolving and changing because new, new students are coming, new instructors are coming, you know, people are moving on in life, people are getting jobs. So you can always come into our community. You're welcome, you know, um, DM people, slide into them DMs, um, talk to people about projects, and you see people getting hired, send them a message, say, hey, you know, let me send you my resume. You know, leverage the value that you've already got with New Camp because there's tons more there. But thank you so much for keeping in touch with us too on our socials. Yes, thank you, yes, Brennan. Thank you, Brennan. Oh, Candice. You are, oh, you got to work. Well, yeah, we, we appreciate you being here and supporting the the stream. Yeah, I like Minet's voice. It's kind of soothing. I think she has like an extra career there after the coding career <laughs> voiceovers. And some people were like, oh, her voice is so soothing. And I'm like, yes, it is. Goals, goals, goals. So I saw another question from Curtis about the, um, yeah, certifications. Did you want to handle that one or did you want me to keep going on? Well, I mean, I, I could, I could say something and then you could just, you could add on to it. Um, pr pretty much, um, Curtis with all the, the boot camps that we offer in addition to the back end boot camp, um, you do reserve a certification of completion. Uh, but not necessarily um, a certificate like you would, you know, like a Microsoft SQL associate. Um, but, you know, the, the knowledge that you'll learn can definitely be used as a, a jump off point into kind of diving deeper and actually, you know, going to Microsoft and um, trying to attain that Microsoft SQL associate certificate. Um, Sandra, go ahead. Oh, yeah, sure. So it's a great way. The backend bootcamp is only 16 weeks long. So it is, it is pretty intense. It is designed to get you up to speed on a lot of technologies as swiftly as possible, uh, which, you know, saves you time and money. Um, so, you know, you don't drag it out longer. Um, and you get skilled and you can enter the, the job search um, a little bit faster. Some people have a different situation where maybe they're a little more comfortable in their current role and they have that time to go a little bit deeper before they start looking for their first uh, tech job. So 
whatever your personal situation is, if you want to do the back end bootcamp and then investigate some certifications, by all means, you know, go for it. And um, the same goes for the exposure to the cloud platforms because you get in our backend bootcamp exposure to AWS, um, GCP, and Azure, which is super awesome. And not many people get that kind of bootcamp experience. Um, I don't really know what other bootcamps offer that. So this, that same goes for those cloud practitioner certifications too. So how, whatever your personal situation is, it, New Camp is great because you can it, start off. It's a really great jumping off point if you want to go deeper on, on those technologies too. And I think you spend, how long do they spend on SQL? Is it like five weeks or is it four weeks on um, SQL? It's pretty long. It's five weeks on Python. So you do go pretty in depth um, with the data structures and algorithms and then manipulating SQL so yeah it is it is pretty pretty deep there it's uh yeah you're you're right it was uh four weeks four weeks on the sql python and sql section but uh yeah hopefully curtis that that answers your question again great questions keep them coming please um and next we have gary gibson um while you don't have to pay anything extra, um, it actually comes included with the career services that we offer. Um, and you receive the career services after you graduate from any of the you know um, longer boot camps that we, we have on offer. Um, um, let me grab that link for you. But um, as long as you graduate from either the front end, the full stack, or the back end Python boot camp, then you actually uh, the career services is part of um, the package and it comes with completing those boot camps uh, free of charge. Yeah, and just to clarify, you know, we can't guarantee that you'll um, uh, land an internship or or a role. Of course, we wish we could. That would be amazing, but everyone's different. Everyone does differently on their resumes. We don't have cookie cutter projects. We don't have cookie cutter resumes and everyone has different experience levels and um, you know, different uh, interview skills. So um, we don't guarantee that you'll get in. We put the opportunities before you um, and we, we get you as skilled as possible to, to win those opportunities. And then we also coach you too. So yeah, you've already you're already paying in the tuition for all of that. So, um, yeah, super good question though. Oh, and thanks for sharing the link there, Drew. So that link is in in your chats now. Uh, should be across all the platforms. Um, we see some some folks are here from LinkedIn. Some are here from YouTube. Great to have you. You should all be seeing that link to our career services. You can just click through there and scroll down and it'll show you the list of all the things. Like I was telling Brandon, the lifetime access to the community and the course materials is a big one too. Yeah. So one other thing um, I'd like to talk on is um, AI. A lot of people are talking about AI these days. And it's a super hot topic. Um, I got a call from um, a potential student this week who was um, in the boot camp and had to drop out for uh, personal reasons. And then he saw some articles about AI and he wanted to get back in. He was like jazzed to join again. So he's like, should I switch to Python? I don't know, I'm halfway through the full stack. And I was recommending, hey, you know, there's a lot of APIs out there, uh, increasingly. So you can continue on in full stack, pick up where you left off, and make one of your projects pull in something from uh, using an AI API. So I don't know, Drew, if you have uh, 
um, the open AI, uh, open AI. I didn't get it ready on my screen. I just thought of it now actually <laughs> to actually show it. But if you have an open AI account, you can pay for uh, a certain amount of tokens. If you have a new account, I think they just give you like free tokens up to a certain level. I'm not sure if they're still doing that. Uh, they might have stopped it because they had so many people like, boom, new email address, new account, who this? You know, like, give me more tokens. So uh, they might have they might have put a stop to that there. But um, it, in any case, you can go to OpenAI's website, get your API key there, and you can build something that will use their their you know use their back end. Why do you want to uh, make your you know, you know, stop your stop your progress in the boot camp when you could still build an AI adjacent <laughs> project for your portfolio. Uh, you can still call it an AI project as far as I'm concerned. And um, a lot of people are into that and they think, oh, I have to take the the back end with Python class because I got to learn Python. I was like, you could still use AI tooling uh, and incorporate it with your project um, and be a front end developer. Yeah, so that was all I had on that. Oh, awesome. So do we have a... Yeah, so we have a, we have Candice joining us. Um, her camera's on, her mic is on, and... Her nice. Now. Uh, hi, y'all. <laughs> hey, good to see you. Hey, hi. Good, good to see y'all. Oh, that's a lovely print. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm taking, so I'm taking a 15 minute break, break so I could say, so hello. say hello. <laughs> Am I echoing? Am I echoing? Oh, is your oh, is your, your tab is your tab? Uh, no, your... I I closed the I closed the other tab. Maybe I should turn my mic down a little bit. Okay. Am I good on y'all's end? You're okay. good on my end. I've been muting while Drew is talking. <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure, just to make sure nothing's going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just wanted to say hello because I um, I was a student and absolutely love my experience so much so that I am always talking about New Camp and encouraging people to check it out at least. Um, and I also do workshops um, to encourage people who are wanting to change your careers and check out web development specifically because that's my background um yeah so yeah i just wanted to hey, say hey and come support do y'all have questions for me <laughs> big ups to you candace thank you so much yeah let me um let me ask a question uh which basically so the folks that don't know you which boot camp did you do and how did you find the experience Sure. So I did the front end and mobile app development. I'm thinking about doing a little bit more because I'm always learning. Um, but I found out about New Camp a little bit later than I wish that I had um, because I started learning to code in 2019 and hit JavaScript. And because I was learning on my own, I didn't really know, like, how do I push through this difficult season. And then I kept trying to push through. 2020 came. We know what happened in 2020, right? So I was just like, it's just too much. I quit and tried to forget about it. And it was just last year when I had some, a, a lot of things happened in my life where I needed to make some changes career-wise. And I was like, you know what? I want to go back to what I really enjoy. And so I, I went back and gotten had gotten refreshed with HTML, CSS and started JavaScript again. And I was like, I'm not going to quit this time. And so as I was doing my own self-study, I decided to also get on LinkedIn and connect with other people who were, you know, learning and um, came across a new camp a couple of times. And then I was like, you know what, I think I need, I need to make a commitment. I need to put some skin in the game. Um, by paying for something, getting involved with a community and having an instructor that could help me when I get stuck so so that I don't quit again because I'm not a quitter and I didn't want to quit. Um, and so, yeah, in January, I 
took the leap and I started the started and I'm finished, finished tonight. tonight. So, so. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> awesome. So can I ask you one more thing, Candace? I don't want to use up your whole break. <laughs> but um so what was it that was holding you back from pulling the trigger on a boot camp? And what made you get over that? If you can remember. Sure. So I was worried about would I be able to do it while still being a present wife and mom because I'm a wife. I have two children and um, I stopped working for a while because I was burnt out. Um, but I wanted to start working again and I had just gotten a brand new job and um, I was like, OK, will I be able to start a job and then a month later start a boot camp? Is that feasible for me? And when I realized that it was part time, that there is an option to put your boot camp on hold, hold if something comes up um, and then also just the pacing and having, you know, the opportunity to learn on my own, but also show up for a workshop once a week. Like that just seemed like something I could maintain. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to take the leap. I'm going to do it. If anything comes up, then I can put it on pause, pick it back up. No pressure. Um, but I didn't have to do that. It just worked out really well with my lifestyle, with my new job, which I get to use HTML, CSS and JavaScript every day. Um, and yeah, it, it just worked out, but I understand that challenge that people are feeling like, can I really do this? Can I commit to this? Can I push through with all the things that I have to do? And I would say, even if you were 60% sure, you should take the leap because there are things that New Camp has in place just in case it might not be the right timing. Um, and so, yeah, it's a win-win situation for everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Candace. You so much, Candace. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Super All right. awesome. All right. Thank gonna, you for I'm sharing. Gonna... <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to meet you. And for, I mean, face to face. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all have, right, have a good evening. Thanks, Candace. You too. <laughs> you too, Candace. Bye, Candace. Bye. Wow, that was really great. That's uh, that's super awesome, inspiring story. Yeah, most definitely. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, she's she really is an inspiration. I mean, um, if you um, are following her on LinkedIn, um, you can kind of see, um, you know, the progress that she's made, and even um, you know, the the break that she took prior to kind of slowly getting back into it again, but. Um, really inspiring. Um, um, yes, go, okay. go Candace okay. indeed. <laughs> yeah. And she mentioned a key thing too, like, don't quit. <laughs> just don't just keep going that so I struggled with that, man. And, and then, you know, even when I, you know, I, I quote unquote made it cause I was a freelancer for a little bit. Um, and, um, you know, then I, I did a little instructing and then I got like a, a huge job. And then I'm like, I, I was so afraid of, of getting fired or like afraid of not being able to fulfill my role, you know, and then I quit. <laughs> so the, the key is just don't quit. Um, but yeah, that's a good personal journey, life experience advice from a cool, a cool person. So thank you so much, Candace. And, you know, even if you do quit, you can get back on the horse. It's kind of like quitting smoking. You, you have to, you have, you can fail many times. <laughs> so if any of you listening are in tutorial hell or tutorial purgatory, as they call it, you know, and you're just doing YouTube videos and not able to build your own projects or not able to um, take your Tuts projects to the next level by adding features, you get stuck, you don't know what to build. A boot camp might give you that push that you really need, so you want to want to consider that. And I see a uh, thank you, a a um, answer to my question from Curtis. ChatGPT three is free. GPT four is the subscription. I see that in the comments there. So true, true that. 
Um, so break out those multiple email addresses, I guess, for your for your projects. <laughs> so Curtis, it sounds like you know a little bit something about that. So yeah, let us know if you've if you've tried it, um, if you've tried the API. Um, have you committed your key to GitHub by mistake? You know, all those great things. Let us know. <laughs> Let us know in the comments. So yeah, one yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I saw that one. I was just going to comment on that. So networking. Hmm. That's kind of like uh, Ansible or something like that, maybe. I'm yeah. not quite sure. I don't know. I don't know much about networking and uh, coding, but uh, I know they have virtual networks. So um, you might need to to learn some some coding skills for that these days. Um, I know for sysadmin, you have to know like um, I don't know, like C or like mainframe stuff, or I don't know, some kind of obscure obscure things. I, I'm, I'm totally sure there are such boot camps out there, not at NewCamp, but um, for sure, yeah, that's something that you could, you could look into. And it will always help to know, um, to know Python, I think, for that kind of thing too. Um, and it'll always help to know about cloud, um, and backend systems, which we do cover in the backend bootcamp. So, good question. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Curtis. Let me see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ansible is Python. Yeah. So, um, it's some kind of uh, command line IT automation software. Um, so, if you're learning Python, then good job. You are, you're, uh, you're on the right track <laughs> if you're interested in those, uh, um, those kind of IT things. And if you are coming from the IT world and you want to get into programming or software development, but you're like more help desk or something like that, those kinds of things can help you too. Uh, you already know about ticketing. Um, you probably already know about customer service, which is good for dealing with clients or you know users, end users. So you could leverage a lot of that on your resume too. So yeah, good job making those connections between the, the industries. So how about you there, Drew? Anything on your radar lately? I've talked about LinkedIn and Indeed and researching your local uh, job market applying for remote roles that are in your metro area so you can stand out as a yankable candidate who can be pulled into the office i'm just i just be making up words sometimes <laughs> and then um also we talked a little bit about how you don't necessarily have to learn python or what's the other one r for um ai you can have front end or JavaScript projects and still utilize existing APIs that are increasing in the AI or large language model space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And still put, pull those into your, um, your projects. One question I do get a lot is, should I do front end or should I do back end? Should I be a front end developer or should I be a back end developer? Uh, so uh, maybe Drew, if you want to talk anything about that that you've heard, I just had that question today in the email um, in my inbox, and it's kind of like, yeah, you should. Part of it is your 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 preference. What do, what do you think about that, Drew? Well, I mean, I, I believe that um, you should always like between both uh, stacks between both ends. Um, I believe that the front end would be a lot easier to learn. I mean, that's not to say that it's not difficult. I mean, so is the back end, but um, it's a lot better to learn the front end first. So that way, um, you know, as you're kind of dabbling with the back end, you 
kind of get at least what the entire picture looks like because you're, you know, eventually it's not just going to be buttons that you click and all that stuff. I mean, eventually that stuff is going to like when you click on this button, it's going to, you know, relay this message, go over here and perform this action, spit it back, you know. So um, it's good to um, I think it's good to start with the front and then also kind of dabble with the back. So that way you can kind of know for yourself which end you actually enjoy more. And then it also kind of puts you in a position um, that, you know, like you kind of know both ends at this point. Um, you don't know one more than the other quite yet, but you'll be able to piece things together a lot um, smoother or a lot more quickly. What do you think? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel it's good to know, at least if you if you're strong on one, you have to know a little something about the other side too. So it depends which one you want to be strong in. And um, usually if you are, you know, good on your back end using your Python or whatever, or even node on the back end, uh, maybe your front end looks a little janky or you just use bootstrap all the time um, and, and you can get by. But if you're super great on the front end, and you know you're a front end whiz you can you want to still know a little bit about the back end that is so true you you're you're completely right another aspect um uh, people mention and this kind of depends on again on your local job market or what i was saying about leveraging your previous domain knowledge so like if you're a nurse and you go to a boot camp you learn how to code then you want to build a project that has to do with patient care in your portfolio and then apply to a, the health industry developer jobs that are out there. So if you, um, if you have that, uh, you don't really have to worry too much about what, what I, what I'm about to say, which is sometimes you, you want to put the new fresh graduate, the newbie coder on a, a button or a pop-up or update this copy or this text, right? You don't necessarily want them to be messing around with the customer phone numbers or, you know, credit card data or API or anything like that. Not necessarily for the new bootcamp graduate. You want to put them on something that's cosmetic first, perhaps, perhaps. And this, this depends. This is just a little, a lot of this is just me kind of riffing here. So you want to take it with a grain of salt, but, um, it can be easier to break into the front end because um, it might be a little less business critical changes going on. You still can wreck stuff on the front end for sure, but <laughs> it's not going to, it's not going to be, you know, um, as you know, you might not bring things down. Um, so it could be a little bit easier to, to get your foot in the door as a new graduate who's on the front end. Um, but again, coming from the back end, if you have a strong portfolio, and like I said, if you're, you're relying on your strengths and you already have some experience, like let's say you worked in fast food, you want to apply for back end developer jobs or Python related jobs at industries that are in the fast food sector. And then when you go to interview, you really sound like you know what you're talking about. You understand the business, you understand the customer pain points and so on. So what I just said could totally not apply to you. <laughs> so, or, or, you know, you can mitigate any weakness that you might have as a brand new graduate. You can mitigate that with your strengths. So um, yeah, that's one thing that your coach, career coach can help you with. And that's one thing like our career advice channels and our resume review channels, we could really um, help you to firm up your, um, your personal branding, so to speak with that. Awesome. Yeah. Well said. So we have, well said, Sandra. Uh, thank you, Sandra. Yeah. We got a, uh, a hello from Michelle in the chat. How's it going? Hi, Michelle. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for joining too. The more the merrier. And thank you, Anuja, for being here, for holding it down. Thanks a lot for joining. We love you, Anuja. 
Um, so yeah, so any other last questions? Can't believe we're winding down to the end here. But any other questions uh, before we start wrapping up? Get them in the chat or join the stream link that Drew has kindly posted in the chat. You want to dial in. And then other thing, if we talk more, a little bit more about um, uh, automation and um, Python and AI and where we see things are going overall, generally, no matter what industry you work in, it's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty huge. Like I saw one um, survey where people were saying that, you know, do you think AI is going to impact your job um, in the in the foreseeable, like in the next uh, uh, foreseeable future? I, I forgot what the exact terminology was that was in the in the uh, survey, but most of the people, boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, they had it broken down by like age, and overwhelmingly, people <laughs> were like, "Yes." I, I'm going to need to do something. I'm going to need some training or I, I am going to be impacted uh, by AI in the, in the future. So it is on a lot of people's minds for sure to kind of upskill. And it's crazy because, it's crazy because when you think, when about, you think it, about it, even things even that things are not even not tech related, related is touched, is by, touched tech by tech somehow. somehow. It's involved with it's involved tech. With tech. Somehow, you somehow, know, like it's affected, you know, like by, it's affected it. by it. So, um, um, where it's going now, where it's going now, AI and AI. Stuff, it's going to be more, um, what's the word prevalent, or we're just going to see it, you know, pop up a lot more, like to the point where, you know, how the, the internet first came into our lives, like, oh my gosh, the internet, now everyone uses it, you know, and then after that, it was just Google it. Uh, not, now, um, uh, people still use Google, obviously, but I mean, now, now, um, you know, a lot of people are starting to use the, the AI, the the LLMs, Chat GPT, and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's only a matter of time. Only a matter of time. Preparing yourself by upscaling now is most definitely gonna, you know, it's it's gonna help somehow. Mhm. Mm yeah, I actually, um, that's true. You wanna prepare before thinking, look ahead. I actually just looked really quick what the reference was, and it was a. Uh, a survey by Morning Consult, um, and they did a survey of 2,204 adults, um, and this was from JFF.org, Jobs for the Future, and they said that 52% of Gen Xers and 43% of baby boomers answered yes when asked, do you feel the need to gain new skills as a result of the impact of AI? So. A rough, roughly half or more than half um, of uh, folks out there are feeling they need to get some sort of new skills. <laughs> so good time to start with at least Web Dev Fundamentals, our four week boot camp. Um, yeah, it's a really good way to dip in and see, dip your toe in the water, so to speak, and see if, if you'll if you like it. And we might have a good, a good question from A there in the chat. Yeah, very nice. Hey, what's up, hey? Thank you very much for your question. I'm 42 years old. Can I get a job as backend developer, um, even though you're changing careers? So yeah, we talked a little bit about that just now. And um, there can be, of course, age discrimination, challenges, ageism uh, in any sector. Uh, whether it's you know, physical labor or, or office labor, um, computing. So, so many uh, industries and sectors have that challenge if you're changing careers midlife. So having said that, it is still possible. So the answer is yes, you can. Um, the good thing about being an older career changer is you are the wisest that you've ever been right now <laughs> you know you are at your most wise point of your life 
you have amassed the most knowledge, most knowledge, the largest network of friends and coworkers, ex coworkers um, that you've ever had in your life up until this moment. So you're at the top of your at the top of your game socially, or you should be. So that is going to be a huge help to to helping you um, um, in your job search. So you'll just want to be strong on your projects, make sure you work on your projects. And I'm sure you have domain knowledge at 42 in another field that's not related to coding. Well, maybe you were a dentist or maybe you were a zoologist or whatever you were. Put that in your project. Make your project about teeth or animals or something. <laughs> so um, you should you should have really strong uh, projects and then leverage your network of friends, family, co-workers, ex-co-workers, and really hit hard. Let everyone know you're searching and um, you're probably good at expressing yourself too. Um, at 42, you're probably the best. You know yourself better. You know what you want. You know what you don't want. So you can cut through a lot of the extraneous stuff. You're not going to waste time on certain jobs that um, you might waste time on when you're younger or stay in a role too long or something. So yeah, you're, um, you're probably in a good spot. And also there's a lot of consultancy roles where people want that extra seasoning or they want to have someone who's experienced in other industries um, on their team. So thanks, A. Good question. Mike, we got a Mike Mustang also. Yeah, and uh, thank you so much, Drew, for holding it down on the chat. I appreciate it too. That's great. <laughs> So, yeah, um, and I didn't, I didn't give you a chance. Actually, I mentioned uh, Mike there, Drew, but um, I didn't give you a chance to chime in if you had any comments on A's comment as well there, Drew. Yeah, no, you, you pretty much said a, a lot of it, and we were actually, you know, speaking on it um, prior to you, you know, hopping on and joining us. And, you know, by the way, thank you. Um, but you can, uh, like, uh, I, I guess she... Zandra said it best when, you know, you're pretty much the best version of yourself at this point. Um, you know yourself very well. So you don't have to um, so much second guess yourself. Like, you know, the type of person you are. Um, and I'm pretty sure at, at this point, you know, you're great at setting goals and trying to, you know, set out and achieve them. And um, within this field, even including back end development, um, a lot of the stuff that you've already learned prior, so like like she said, zoologist, dentist, um, you know, what have you, um, th that stuff will carry over. So none of that experience that, you know, you've had thus far is wasted. So. Nice. Thanks there, Drew. And uh, before we shut down, I wanted to get to Mike's comment from uh, um, about Good advice. You just graduated. Congratulations on your graduation. That's awesome, Mike. Um, I see you're coming in from Facebook. Uh, thanks for um, for joining our stream. And you are uh, getting into the rejections. Yes, we will all experience those those rejections for sure. And um, just mentioning that it it seems like uh, jobs, value certificates, and experience. So yes, it's a great thing that you have your your portfolio of projects for sure. Um, so you want to definitely work on those portfolio projects and um, make sure you uh, you put them in your uh, links in your resume. So when you you make your PDF of your resume, make sure to link your GitHub. Make sure your GitHub profile looks clean. There's lots of YouTube videos out there on how to clean up your GitHub profile. Take out any references to var if you have var in any of your projects. Uh, uh, make sure it's const or let. Um, you know, just little things like that. There's little tweaks you can do to your GitHub. And um, also, you can link your projects um, to that um, um, to that PDF, like in your in your resume, you can have a project session. 
So a lot of times people's resume will say Mike Mustang, full stack developer, experience, truck driver, two years. Right? So it's kind of like, what? Wait, huh? I'm confused. <laughs> so you want to make sure it says Mike Mustang projects, trucker, family, communication app. This app connects to the Google Maps API and drops a pin and takes a photo from the dash cam and sends it, shares it to family and friends Instagram. It uses React Native and MongoDB, blah, 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 blah. Then below that experience, truck driver, two years. Then you apply to FedEx as a developer or you know, you, you send a DM to the FedEx technical recruiter who's in your region or whatever. So you kind of want to make yourself seem more competent, make yourself seem more relevant to the company, apply to the right industry. And that's great that you apply to Accenture. We had someone in our community say that a rejection is not a no, it's a not right now. Uh, I don't remember who said that. If you do, Drew, feel free to correct me there. But yeah, it's, um, Samantha, it's not... Samantha. Okay, yeah. See, now it would be Samantha. She's so smart. It's it's not a no. It's a not right now. So um, to quote the, the stunning and why Samantha, yes, uh, you, you want to take that advice to heart and don't feel like, don't try not to take the rejections personally. Um, and don't feel like you can never get in there. Just keep plugging away. All right, I guess we're on time. We are, we're out of time. Right, Drew? Oh yeah, 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 yes, yes. yes. Uh, uh, sorry if we didn't sorry. get to any of your questions. Um, feel free to reach out to us uh, through um, our uh, info at newcamp.co inbox. Um, here, I'll go ahead and type that in the uh, chat here. Um, but thank you so much for you know hopping on and spending some time with us, asking us your questions, and even you know just chilling with us, relaxing with us, talking story. Um, um, we look forward yeah, to, and, uh, look forward to the next one. Uh, send us yeah. an email at info at newcamp.co. That's info at newcamp.co if we didn't get to your question, and we'll be happy to to get back to you. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.